this is our tutorial part six um, for our project that covers uh, chapters 16 and 17. Um, so we're focusing on the law of large numbers. So the law of large numbers is as the size of a sample for a simple random sample. Remember that's what SRS means, simple random sample increases, the sample mean tends to get closer and closer to the population mean. So as I'm taking larger and larger samples from a population, our sample mean is a better approximation of the population mean. So let's talk about an example population and a measurement for the individuals of the population. And let's think of an example. So we could be studying the weight of oranges, right? That's something that occurs naturally that should fit a normal distribution. And as I take a bigger and bigger sample, I get a true pro better approximation of the mean weight of oranges. Um, we could also look at the mean height of seven-year-olds. right? There's going to be some outliers, but as we take bigger and bigger samples, it's be closer and closer to the true mean. So to get a sample mean from those measurements, right, we would take samples, of course. And so what questions might we want to ask about our sample mean? Well, we want to ask if it's a good approximation of the population mean, right? We want to figure out what the standard deviation is. So let's work through some examples. Well, one example. This is going to be a nice little short tutorial. So here are the heights of 21 statistics students in inches. And the parameter of interest is the mean score in this population. This sample is a simple random sample of size n equals 6 drawn from the population. So actually I want n to be 5. So let's make a histogram of these 21 heights. And then we're going to want to do that. So here I have height equals C. This is how I define a data set. This is what creates our variable. So if I run this, right, I can now see that I do have height. Did that work? One ninety two. So I've done this. Okay, well I can take the mean of my heights, I can take the standard deviation of my heights, but then what I want to do is I want to create an index, and that index is going to be a sample of, because I've got 21 students here, that index is going to go from 1 to 21 and pick 5. So I create an index, there's my index, these 5 numbers, so I'm going to pick the 13th, 7th, 6th, 15th, and 12th student. If I define it again, it'll change. So now I'd pick the 7th, 9th, 8th, 4th, 17th student. So this is saying I'm picking five numbers between 1 and 21. Okay, so then if I take the mean of the height index, that's going to take the mean of those five takes mean of five sample. Right, so here I have that. So that would be the mean of my sample. Remember our true population mean is 67, but the mean of this sample was 68. I can create a histogram of height. Look how beautiful that is, right? Kind of normal, mostly uniform, right? But that's not a sample distribution, right? That's a population distribution. So in order to take a sampling distribution, what I want to do is replicate 10,000 times, creating an index for a sample, picking sample size 5, and then calculating that mean height index. And I'm saving that as Z. So let's see what Z looks like, because I didn't do that. So here's Z. Look at that. That's all 10,000 population means. Um, I guess I just kind of looked at the first few lines, huh? 
And then what I want to do is I want to create a history of Z. See how that fits the normal distribution. If I didn't do as many samples, right, it wouldn't quite approximate a normal distribution, right? I've got to take more and more samples and it will get really close to the normal distribution right here, right? If I wanted to, I could add a curve. We've learned how to do that before. So if the population from which the sample is taken is normal, which height would be normal, the sampling distribution of my sample mean is the mean comma sigma over the square root of n, right? That's our central limit theorem. So this is very, very important. The central limit theorem, no matter what the distribution for a population, when n is large, the distribution of, that's going to be mu, of x bar, yeah, of, let me type that, of bar. is approximately um, the normal distribution of mu where our standard deviation is over the square root of n. So how big does n have to be? Well, it really depends on the population and its distribution. And we're gonna talk about that more as this course goes on. So I have given you the PDF of this and the R markdown file. If you have any questions, please comment.